Hi folks, it's Richard from Inclusive Driving. Um, one of my learners sent me a screenshot of a theory test question that we were struggling with. Thank you, Alex. Um, and in answering the question to Alex, I thought I might as well do a video of it just to explain a few of the words that are used. Okay, so the question is, you're turning right at crossroads. An oncoming driver is also turning right. What's the advantage of turning behind the oncoming vehicle? Now, I'm not going to give you the multiple choice answers. Let's talk about it and then we'll see if we can come up with a good reason and see if that matches one of those possible solutions or those answers. So this is something we often talk about when turning right at traffic lights. But remember, turning right is turning right. OK, the traffic lights actually make no difference. So I'm going to draw a junction without traffic lights. So here we have. Some crossroads. Let's put in some road markings. Now, this question is kind of assuming. That you haven't got a give way line. Although the same thing would apply even if you have got the giveaway line and we'll perhaps look at that towards the end of the video. I'm just going to rub out the centre lines in the middle of the junction just to make things a little bit clearer. And I'm just aware that this light is also just casting a bit of a, an unwanted glare on there. That's better. I think we can see that better. So I'm going to draw the two cars in blue. So we've got one car that wants to do that and we've got another car that wants to do that. Can you see that in this orientation you're kind of getting in each other's way a little bit. Let's draw some cars instead of lines and see what's going on. So we've got, let's say we've got one car waiting there. It's waiting to go into this road. Let's perhaps use a different colour for the other car. Got another car waiting there to go into this road. Now, in this position, what's going to happen is the red car is going to go there. And the blue car going to go there. Can you see that you're not getting in each other's way when you move? So theoretically, you could both move at the same time. And if there was another car behind you and another car behind them, perhaps also waiting to turn right, this improves traffic flow. Now, we've got a few ways of defining this, a few phrases that we use to say or to describe this situation. This is what's often described as near side to near side. I don't like that word, but it's something that is sometimes used in the essential skills and it's sometimes used in theory test questions. The near side of your car is the side nearest to the pavement. Okay, so let's just make that a little bit bolder. So this is the near side. This is the near side. As you both turn at the same time, the near side of your car ends up next to the near side of the other car. Let me just draw that in a in a corner here. So let's draw a dot for the driver. So as you pass each other, it's looking like this, and you've got near side next to the near side. This is brilliant for traffic flow. You're not getting tangled up with each other, but your view of the road ahead is actually blocked by this red car. So imagine you're sitting in the blue car, you're sitting in that corner. Your view of what's coming this way is blocked by this red car. So there's a disadvantage of it. Let's draw it the other way. Oh, let's just define the other terms for this. 
commonly called nearside to nearside. I tend to refer to it as passenger side to passenger side just because I don't like the terms offside and near side, whereas passenger side I think is a bit more descriptive and less easy to forget what it means. Now let's redraw them in a different position. So the red car is coming from there. Let's say it waits there to do that and you wait there to do that. Okay. This is much better for visibility because you've no longer got the red car blocking your view of what's coming down here. Okay. So arguably it's a safer option. The problem comes if you've got more than one car waiting to turn right. Can you see we've now no longer got a clear path. We've got a queue of traffic blocking your turn into the right. If people are being considerate, they'll perhaps leave a gap there so that you can go. You've still got the problem of this car blocking your view. Okay. And likewise, we could have another queue of traffic here. And if nobody leaves a gap there, well, it's actually hindering traffic flow again. But to answer the question then, let's just recap it. You're turning right at a crossroads. An oncoming driver is also turning right. What's the advantage of turning behind the oncoming vehicle? So this is what we would describe as offside to offside, or as I tend to call it, driver side to driver side. The options we've got are You'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. You'll less, use less fuel because you can stay in a higher gear. You'll have more time to turn or you'll be able to turn without stopping. I think the best option there that matches our description is you'll have a much clearer view of the oncoming traffic. Now, when we decide which method to use, few things to think about. First of all, are there any road markings to tell you which way to do it? You might have some arrows in the road to tell you that you're going to stop short of this car. So that would be passenger side to passenger side. Or you might have some arrows like that to tell you to go behind or further on than the other car okay and these arrows will generally also have perhaps the protected markings around them something like that if there are road markings that tells us what to do we're thinking really about when there aren't any road markings it doesn't matter which option you choose but Really, both drivers have got to do the same thing. You've almost got to either be a mind reader to work out what the other car is going to do and you do the same. Or maybe let the oncoming vehicle position first. And then when you know what method they're using, you can position yourself. Or you could be the proactive one. You could position yourself first. But really, we don't want both cars moving at the same time until you really know what method you're going to use. Having said that, 99.9% .9 of the time, people tend to go passenger side to passenger side. Whether that's because they think that's the only acceptable method, I'm not sure. But often, if you are the proactive one and you position yourself driver side to driver side position, the oncoming car will think you're doing something very odd because they perhaps don't realise that that is an option. So although it's better for visibility and it's maybe safer, 99% of the times we just do passenger side to passenger side because it improves traffic flow and that's what everybody else is expecting us to do. So that's all for now and we'll see you on another video very soon.